Христос воскрес! Христос воскрес! Христос воскрес! А, к сожалению, сестры и братья, сегодня по-английски мне на сердце лежит без перевода, так что извините. Um, he has risen. Risen indeed. Uh, just sitting there listening to these words. He has risen. It just brings tears to my heart and my soul. Because I don't think there's nothing more powerful than he has risen. Who can say that? Gandhi? Muhammad? Any other great leaders that walked this world? Yes, they were great leaders. But nobody could ever say he has risen. Only Jesus Christ can say that. Hallelujah. Uh, today, the kids perform beautifully. Um, you guys can have a seat with your parents. Thank you so much. You guys did a wonderful job. Um, especially the young man. It, it really touched my heart when the young man, um, he spoke his testimony. And right away I knew that the Holy Spirit was leading the service. And when I heard this testimony, it, it, brought, it brought tears to my eyes because I remembered my testimony. And there's nothing greater and nothing more powerful than our testimony because we beat with the blood of the Lamb and our testimony. Hallelujah. Uh, today I want to talk about another young man. Uh, a man that uh, came from another country. Um, and he was poor and, and weak and vulnerable. And uh, he started knocking on people's doors. And he seen these people were very rich and very great and, and powerful, mighty men that walked this world. And uh, he came up and knocked on the door and uh, asked this person, can you feed me? I see you have food. I see you have, you have blessing beyond abundant. And you have... Uh, full counters and cabinets and fridges. All I want is a bite to eat. Please, just give me a bite to eat. And this, uh, this person laughed and closed the door and said, I don't have time, I have to work tomorrow. And then he uh, put his head down and walked to the next door, an even bigger house. And he knocked on the door and he said, Sir, uh, good sir, please, um, can I have something to eat? I'm very hungry. And this person looked at him and said, Young man, I would love to, but... I have to work tomorrow. Close the door. I don't have time. And he kept walking around. And he kept knocking on these doors. And all these people kept slamming the doors in this young man's face. And he didn't know why. He didn't know what was going on. All he wanted was something to eat. But people were too busy. People didn't want nothing to do with him. And he just walked away. And the saddest thing is, is us as Christians, me as a Christian, we have these testimonies in our hearts. We have these blessings in our lives. And we shut the door on God's face with a, a word, with a song. Somebody says, somebody says, can you pray for me? And you say, yes, I'll pray for you. You're in my thoughts. And then we forget about it, walk away, like keep living our everyday life like nothing happened. And it's sad today Christians live like this. And I, I'm like this myself. Many times the pastor came up to me, Paul, can you, you have this testimony in your heart. Uh, you can maybe say a word. You can maybe say a song. And I came up with an excuse. I'm oh, sorry, I have to work, brother. I have to uh, wake up in the morning. I have to wake up at 3 in the morning. You know, I would love to. And for 10, for 10 years I didn't say my testimony even though I had this testimony in my heart. For 10 years I lived this warm life and just went on my daily life. For five years in this church and never even said my testimony and made excuses to the pastor and slammed the door in his face every time. And said, no, I just can't and came up with excuses like many Christians do today. Even though we have the most powerful story and testimony in our hearts like this young man had. It just touched my heart that God healed him. God healed him and he has this foundation. He has this testimony in his heart forever now. And this is where it starts, sisters and brothers. And we have to keep going with that. It says in Revelations 12, 11, if you have your Bibles. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Hallelujah. That is such a powerful verse to me. In our old church, we built men and women of God. Not 
not from just theology, not from knowing the Bible really good. Yes, this is very good too, but you know, you can come up to an atheist, and a lot of these guys know more than I do. A lot of these guys studied the Bible. A lot of these guys were Christian and grew up in Christian families, and they know theology and the Bible more than I do, more than you do. But your testimony, you can say your testimony that's in your heart that God planted in your life. And you can speak this to them. And they can never say anything. They'll just sit there and listen. And your souls and your hearts will connect. And you will have that living word. And nothing more powerful than your testimony. You can have that. And you can testify to anybody. And you can keep that. You know, preach the gospel. But if necessary, use words through your life. And people will see this because we are the light of the world. Hallelujah. I want to speak my testimony finally after 10 years of uh, holding it in my heart. And I'm not going to glorify the devil and how he um, laughed at me and how he, um, how he just laughed at my life. I'm just going to try to glorify God. So God's name is, uh, is risen. So, so he is the front of my testimony. And it, it, I'll just start with uh, the first steps to God. When I first came to God, I'm kind of from a Christian family, not really like everybody. My dad was uh, not Christian. In the last years of his life, he came to God. But I had a praying mother. The most powerful thing in this world is the praying mother. And my mother, she, thank you, Yaku Mama, she prayed me all out of this world. Every night I would come home from chilling, from partying in this world and clubs. She would be on her knees praying. And that night I would, I would either come close to death or something very bad would happen and my mom was on her knees praying for me every night thank you Jesus and one night I was driving from the club going to the going to the next uh, next place next after party if you want to call it and um, I'm listening to rock music and I'm rocking out and whatever doing my thing and all of a sudden the radio goes out and I tripped out I'm like what is going on so I go to the next preset, and number two is uh, rap. So I'm thinking, that's going to work. Psh, nothing's working. Next one, techno, and so on and so forth. And the last preset, because I had a praying mother, and I went to church, a Christian <laughs> station still worked. And they started talking about this Christian, this Christian uh, church and this conference. And bring your family, bring your kids uh, I think it was Grace Baptist Church in uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, where I'm from. And I didn't know what was going on. And at the end, it said, please come join us on February 8th, so-and-so date. And this just hit me. I pulled the car over. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, who's trying to reach out to me? Because February 8th is the day I was born. I just broke down into tears. And I had goosebumps all over me and I still thought it was nothing I just brushed it off and uh, I just kept living my life normally still kept partying still kept still kept chilling and a, a few months went by I just kind of forgot about it like we always do and one night I came by and my mom was sitting there at 2 3 in the morning and she says there was, a, there was a word for you. You will come to God willingly or in fear and anguish on all fours. This touched my heart so hard for two seconds. And I kept living my life. I thought nothing of it. I'm like, what word? What prophecy? What are you guys talking about? I have my own thing to do. And I, I never went to church, you know. I had Christian friends that see me places, and they would say, you know, come to church, at least get a smile on your face. And, and ironically, the sad thing is, I would just come to church on Easter once a year just to see. I would come to church in my ripped jeans and long shaggy hair, and I would sit by my mom, and she would have tears of joy once a year. And today, I'm standing here. A living testimony on Easter behind the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know, 
when, uh, when, uh, when I heard these words, I, I kept living my life. And this time, it wasn't just a fling. It wasn't just uh, in one ear and out the other. I, uh, I later experienced the wrath of God. Uh, he, he let depression into my life. He let loneliness. He let anxiety. He let agony. Uh, every other week I was getting shot at. My own friends turned against me. I was getting jumped at. Uh, I jumped. Um, just my car almost flipped a few times. Just so much stuff. The drugs I didn't even want anymore. The partying, the drinking. I was just sitting in my room alone and terrified. And, and I didn't know what to do next. And I, I just had all this scary worldly stuff happening to me. I didn't even want to live at one point. And the depression and the suicidal thoughts. And, and I just hit rock bottom. That everybody put a cross on me. I didn't know where to go, what to turn to. All I did was watch movies. And one day I was laying there and I watched some movie from like 1980s. And this verse came up. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Ecclesiastes 11, 9. Sisters and brothers, my bones shook in my body. It was an experience and an encounter that I never want to overlive again. So much fear and so much anguish filled my heart and soul. I literally felt my bones. I dropped to my knees. Tears just went pouring. I threw my hands up into God. I realized who and what the living God was, what this fear was. I didn't want to turn back again. I didn't want to live that life. And those tears turned into joy and God filled that emptiness, that hole in my heart that I was trying to fill with this world that so many people are today looking into this world, looking for things of this world. Whatever it might be, there's so many sins, but a lot of people today are trying to fill this hole. A lot of people today are looking to this world and there's nothing and only Jesus can fill that because he has risen today and he is here in me and you and every Christian that is sitting here that has overlived him truly in their hearts. Whoever can, whoever can testify, you have that testimony in your hearts. Live that testimony. Be that walking, walking manna because he lives in us, sisters and brothers. Hallelujah. There's nothing more powerful. And today I just want to challenge every single one of you, including myself. To be that testimony, to have that testimony. And I want to challenge our church to raise men and women with testimonies, walking testimonies in our hearts. And I want to challenge you to have your testimony like this young man did before the service. Have this testimony ready for your Tuesday service. This Tuesday I will see every one of us, including me, without an excuse like I used to do for five years and have that testimony ready. And let's just pray for that boldness. And we come up here and say our testimonies, whether it's at work, at church, to our neighbors, doesn't matter. you got to speak this. you got to speak these words. And they can't do that because that's yours. That's the gift that God gave you and me. Every single one of us, we have this. And we have to give it to the world like that manna. And they need that, especially in this time, sisters and brothers. Nobody else can give it to us the way the Lord Jesus Christ does. And gives us that love, joy, and happiness. Hallelujah. Let's just pray for God to fill us. Fill this room for the Holy Spirit to come down. If you have not overlived him. If you don't know him. If he's not in your heart. Just pray. Raise your hand. He will touch you. He will heal you. He will fill that hole. He'll fill that hole in your hearts. Raman to min and the skin to fried. Karbana son to be the garden. Jesus. Allah Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless every brother. Bless every sister on this spot, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for your blood, for your resurrection, Lord. Bless every one of us. I see that you're you're leading this. You're leading this blessed service, God. Your Holy Spirit is leading us right now. Touch every heart. Touch every soul. Maraidis kuntum randu freeman. Freemant maraidis kindalaiden. Hallelujah, Jesus. Kindalaiden. Thank you, Lord, for your cross. For your, for your, for Jesus, for resurrection, 
Indeed, you have risen in our hearts and in our lives. Bless the rest of the service, every heart and every person, every sister, every brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Садитесь, пожалуйста. Я немножко прерву, как бы, дам такой like, attention, внимание. А в четверг, а в четверг мы имели men's, men's meeting, когда братья собираются, нас 8-10 человек, и мы даем так... Like и мы делимся свидетельствами. We, uh, we и... Два брата делились и также Пол делился. Two brothers shared the word and uh, testimonies and so did Paul. Paul должен был проповедовать еще неделю назад. Paul was supposed to preach a week ago. И мне говорят, что-то случилось, как будто враг ему помешал, как будто. Something happened, the devil intervened and uh, he made an excuse again. Я посчитал, если враг ему помешал то воскресенье, то на воскресенье, где победа за Христа, уже он не помешает. Uh, today is the power of Jesus, the power of God. Today he will not intervene, he will not disrupt this. Hallelujah. И он стал, пол, дал свидетельство такое для братьев. He said a, a so -so testimony about что what's going on now. Оно меня сильно коснулось, и я несколько дней думал над ним. And uh, I, I touched me so hard that I thought of for a couple days. И я хочу, чтобы ты сказал, вот это теплый христиан, и что в последнее время произошло. And uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I ended up coming out of rehab. Many of you don't know. I was in a rehab center. Да, когда он когда-то раньше был э, в рехабе и это уже прошло. And then I came out, you know, I was a leader. I used to go on mission trips. I went to Bible college in Siberia and all that good stuff. Потом он был и, и в библейском институте, он начал служение, начал служить. And then uh, I got married. Потом я женился. And uh, had kids, got a job. I wanted to. Я имел уже детей, имел работу. Uh, I wanted to build for them, build for this world. Я уже хотел это как бы все построить для этого мира. И Бог поставил так, что я почти получился как бездомный. Я пошел в рехаб опять. Через всю Америку. And every door was closed. Nobody would let me in. I was looking for this love again that I lost the first time. И все было закрыто, и я искал опять же той любви, которую я потерял. And from Midwest all the way to West Coast, I found the rehab center here in Portland, Oregon. И все-таки он нашел здесь уже этот rehab center. And after finishing the program and going through everything, being a helper, leader. И когда все это закончил всю программу, like I said, I got married. Okay, как я сказал, что я женился. Then later, I started living a chiller life. И потом я так начал опять так в расслабленном таком мирском стиле. Христианская жизнь, но так с перемешку. Больше дом, больше лучше кар, лучше машину. Сейчас я куплю эту машину, эту машину. And I forgot about my testimony, forgot about God, forgot забыл, about everything he did. Я забыл за свидетельство, забыл за Бога, за то, что Бог сделал. I would come to church just to поставить галочку, to put Просто так прийти, регулярно приходил в церковь. Just so my wife would be happy. Чтобы моя жена была довольна. You know, have a few beers on the weekends. Да, имел немножко выпить среди недели. Like usual Christians today. Как обычный христианство сегодня может себе допустить okay. слегка. And then uh, one month, two of my friends that I went to rehab with. The next month, three of my friends that I went to rehab with. And then two more the next month. So within a few months, seven of the friends, close people that I went to rehab with, all lost, lost their lives. За несколько месяцев семь его друзей умерли от наркотиков. И не только наркотиков, еще еще какой-то заразы. Я подумал для себя. Это был пробуждающий призыв в мою жизнь. Особенно человек такой, как вы, как я. 
to have that living testimony in our hearts. And I told God from that day on, the next day, I put it in my heart. I don't care where the future brings us. As long as you're there waiting for me. And from this day on, I've been seeking God's face like never before. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You and, and your family. I thank you for Pastor for not giving up on me for five Amen. years. Amen. Of course, of course. God bless you. God bless you.